Hi, in this video I'll be listing out the most fugitive Daniel Smith watercolors as I go over the results of a six-month light fast test. This test will continue running for one full year, at which point only the truly light fast colors will not have changed at all. I post periodic results at kimcrick.com where you can also find further explanation of light fast rating systems, testing methods, and a fugitive pigment list. For each color, the top stripe is in mass tone or full strength paint, followed by a second stripe of that same color diluted with water. The most fugitive yellow is Oriolan, chemically known as pigment yellow number 40, a color that not only fades but discolors into a dirty brownish gray. As I continue showing these results, I'll put a written list on screen of all of the most problematic colors in this brand. Anthra Red PR177 is a good example of why it's important to light fast test your colors using not only full strength paint swatches, but also visibly diluted with water. There are several pigments like this that do not initially appear to have major fading issues, but sunlight can drastically bleach or break down the pigment chemically if the paint is in thin washes. By one year, this color can completely disappear off the page as if it was never even painted. Very bad news for delicate watercolor washes. Mayan Red PR287 and Alizarin Crimson PR83 are also fading at this point. Permanent Alizarin Crimson unfortunately includes that same problematic PR177, so despite being called permanent, it already shows signs of slight fading. Rhodonite Genuine and Carmine PR176 are starting to show a lighter diluted range, both of which will become dull and desaturated by the one year mark as I've seen in previous tests. Permanent Red Deep PR170 also fades easily when diluted, which is more often the case in red colors since this end of the color spectrum absorbs the most UV light. Opera Pink fades, not due to the PR122 base color, but rather because of the fluorescent neon pink dye added to it for an unnatural vibrancy. Mayan Violet PV58 is fading, and there's a minor shift in Bordeaux PV32, which I'll have to keep an eye on if it gets worse by one year. Some pigments fade at different rates, so it's possible to see colors that fade fast and then stop fading any further, as well as colors that only really start to fade after long-term exposure in the 6 to 12 month range. Moon Glow is in really bad shape, losing all of the warmth due to the fugitive PR177 in the mixture. Shadow Violet is starting to show a loss of its orange, PO73. It looks minor now, but I will warn you that it gets worse by the one year mark. PO73 is normally very light fast. It's sensitive to prolonged repeat exposure when used very diluted. Mayan Dark Blue PB82 can no longer be called a dark blue as it will lighten dramatically in both mass tone and diluted over time. The same goes for Mayan Blue Genuine. These test strips were taken off the window for one week to see if Prussian Blue PB27 and colors that use it in mixtures like Deep Sap Green and Prussian Green would return to normal. These colors may look fine here in the video, but PB27 fades in natural light and later recovers when not exposed to UV light. Prussian is marked as light fast in all brands, even though its appearance fluctuates. Chemically, the iron salts are bleached by the sun, but then recharge in shade. I consider it fugitive because it's possible to cause permanent fading in these colors after a year of just sunrise and sunset light through a window. That and no one really should be expected to take their paintings off the wall for a nap to be considered light fast. Most of the other blues and blue greens are stable. I won't list cobalt green PG19 as fugitive, but be aware that this color has a chemical reaction to the binder causing brown staining. That brownish yellow discoloration is not light fast.
Nearly all of the Browns were light fast, and only Paroline Maroon PR-179 had some minor fading in its diluted range, the severity of which will have to be checked up on at one year. Cyclorite Genuine starts to show increased fading past the six month mark. Similarly to Shadow Violet, it will be a problem over time. There's a lot of undisclosed pigments in the iridescent colors. Many of them are labeled as mica, a pearlescent white mineral known as PW20. It's usually coated with PW6 or an iron oxide like PR101 to make gold, bronze, and copper looking colors. Mica combined with a black such as black iron oxide PBK11 makes silver or gunmetal looking pearlescents. For the colorful ones, such as pinks, purples, and greens, they don't mention the pigment or dyes used. All of these are misleadingly labeled as perfectly lightfast. While lightfast colors can withstand several years or more of direct sunlight, they don't fade in six months or less, like duo cactus flower, duo hibiscus, duo mauve, iridescent sunstone, sapphire, garnet, and ruby. I've tested almost all of their roughly 260 colors, but there are a few colors not shown in this video. I recently acquired Andra Scarlet and the newly released McCracken Black. I don't have Duochrome Violet Pearl, Iridescent Russet, or Goldstone, but I have suspicions about their light fastness and advise caution if considering those colors. The new McCracken Black is an unusual seven pigment mixture containing at least three fugitive pigments, so I expect to see issues with it. I hope this type of video was helpful to you. Let me know if you want to see more light fast report videos in the comment section. If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent light fast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.